Hi, fellow web floors. If you know me yet, I am Nico, web for developer and co-founder of Blogitin, the first web flow partner agency in Munich, Bavaria. In today's video, we'll be going over this effect. All right, so welcome to the Webflow clonable series where I show you how we at Blogitin build crazy web for animations to help companies stand out from the crowds. After this video, you'll be able to clone this page and use it for your own projects. So without further ado, let's get right into Webflow. All right, so quick shout out before we go into Webflow to Eduard Bodak, who created a hero concept for our agency, as you can see right here on Dribble. So I really find it amazing. And thanks so much. It's always great to see the community flow with us and go with the flow. Uh, that's amazing. Thanks so much. All right. So now inside of Webflow, what we can see as always, the HTML on the left and the CSS on the right. And I will go really briefly over the structure and then go directly to the custom code, which is powering this slider. So as some of you folks probably notice, we are using the client first system right here. And that's just the normal structure with the section, page padding, container large, slider component, and so on. That's nothing special. Okay, and that's right here, the slider, which you can see right here is powered by the Webflow CMS, which basically means that the whole slider can be, yeah, updated by the client on its own without the help of developers. All right, so that's it for the basic structure. Let's go directly to the code. So as yeah, probably you folks already noticed, we don't use the normal slider by Webflow. We're using right here, the slick slider. And for this, you have to write some custom code, but it's really simple. I'll explain everything in just a minute. So first thing you have to do is you have to call the slick slider CDN to use the slick slider library. And then that is right here, the important part, which I will go over. You basically have a variable, which you call slider in this case, and then use yeah, a class uh, for which you put on the variable. And in this case, I've got the class of is block. And when you go into the designer and go onto the list of the collection, the slider, you can basically see the is block class right here as a combo class. So this combo class is powering the slider. Okay, and then we have the variable of slider and we're calling the slick method on it. And then we have a lot of different functions to choose from. I won't go over every function of slick.js. I would highly suggest you to go into the documentation and read these functions because there are, there are a lot of them. And there may be the correct one for your project. So we have, for example, the infinite method. If you have, let's say five sliders, five slider items, these five slider items would repeat infinitively, means there's no ending. Then we have center mode, where you can basically focus on the center of the slider and then have only one on the right and one on the left. Then we have variable width, where for example, you have a slider where one item has a length of 200 pixels and the other one has a length of 350 pixels. This is possible with a variable width. And then we have slides to show of four, pretty obvious how many slides you want to show. Then slides to scroll, how many slides you want to scroll per click. Then we have touch threshold, which is really important for the mobile view is when you're scrolling, you also want to drag to scroll and that's possible with the touch threshold. And then we have dots of faults, which is just removing the dots created by stick chairs and then yeah, we can use our own dots if you want to. Then we have a brief arrow and a next arrow where we are also calling the class on it. And if I go into the corner or onto the arrow right here, you can see that the same class is applied on this slick arrow. All right. And then we also have the option to make it responsive with the responsive method and select different options for different breakpoints. In this case, you could just say, on the breakpoint or everything below 989, there is the slider infinite true, and you're only showing three slides at once. It's draggable true, it's touch move true, and swipe to side true. These are just different options that you can use on different breakpoints. Okay, and that's all there is 
to the styler code. Let's again go onto the live site and I want to show, show you the editor view. And right here, you can basically see how it looks like for the client. And if a client, for example, wanted to add a product or edit a product, he could go into the collections, onto products, and then right here could, for example, go into one of the oils and then edit the name how he likes to it and then just hit save and then publish it to a live site. All right, so that's it for the Webflow tutorial for today. If you want to learn more about Webflow and its beautiful animations, then you can visit our website. It's the first link in the description. Without further ado, I'm gonna see you in the next Webflow video and till then, happy coding.